Hi, welcome back to my channel and a new video today. I'm going to be giving you my picks for the best 10 movies we got in 2023. And it was only as I was making this list I realised that this has actually been a pretty strong year for film in my opinion. Um, I didn't think it had been until I was really making this list, but looking at all these films I'm about to talk about with you, these are 10 movies that I would really highly, highly recommend you watch uh, if you haven't had a chance to see them yet. Uh, they're ones I'm definitely going to go back to rewatch as well, but a pretty solid list of movies. So, anyway, of course, this is only my uh, personal ranking. You know, these are not, I'm not doing this by objective quality. These are just my, the movies that are going to stick, stick with me the most and that I got the most enjoyment from and you know I don't get to see all the movies that come out in a year I do this as a hobby I try and see as many films as I possibly can but inevitably there's going to be a load of good movies that I will have ended up missing and of course you know there may be some movies that you just liked more than I did as well so please do join me in the comments have a discussion and let me know what your top 10 picks would be for movies from this year so anyway let's get into my list so my number 10 pick is going to be Missing, and this was one that came out early this year from the same studio that did Searching, which was a movie I also loved. And it's not a found footage film, it's one that's done through the style where you're watching everything through a computer screen and a webcam. So you're seeing everything through that perspective, and they're these two independent mystery stories. Um, so with Missing, it's about this girl whose mum goes away for a long weekend, and never returns and she ends up doing sort of her own investigation into what may have happened and ends up discovering a load of weird stuff that may have gone on uh, that may have led to her disappearance and I was absolutely gripped and fascinated by this film it's it's very clever and creative how it's done where it manages to keep you very engaged and everything's going on through this format of storytelling I, I really like the way these films are done I hope we get more of them because I do think it's like a really interesting new take on like a found footage style movie uh, but I was just captivated by the whole mystery here um, some of the characters they introduced that she's connecting with and getting to look into certain clues for her abroad I, I thought was really well done and it, the movie has so many different twists it keeps you guessing the whole way and it goes to some very dark scary disturbing places at the end as well that really did surprise me so yeah I was absolutely gripped by this film had a really good time with it and I'm hoping this studio goes on to do a third movie because I will be very interested to go and see that so my number nine choice is going to be the new Hunger Games film we've just had and I'm actually a big fan of the Hunger Games movies. I did recently do a ranking of all five of the movies. So if you wanted to hear a little bit more of my in-depth thoughts on each of them, I'll leave you a link to that video after this. But I, I was really welcoming of a new film. Obviously, it's been eight years now since we had the last one. Uh, this one, once again, was based on the source material on a prequel book. I believe it was set about 70 years before the events in the original films, I think. And... Despite it being the same director, kind of bringing his similar vibe to these movies, it did feel quite unique and a fresh take on it to me because, you know, this is setting it where it's very soon after the, the war that broke out and it's the early days of the Hunger Games where they're still establishing what the games are going to be, what purpose they're going to serve. You know, society's really broken down here. Everything's much more disorganised and they're very limited in the technology they have to set up these games so it really did bring a very interesting and different take on the games to the sort of more futuristic and sci-fi version we get in those original films. My main worry going into this was whether we were going to be able to follow President Snow as a main character, you know, when he's a young man going through these events. Because he, you know, he's such a great villain in the original films in the sense that he's evil as hell. So I was like, are we going to be able to get on board with this character? But I think the main actor did an amazing job of kind of portraying him as this guy that's uh, very human, you could follow along with him, but at the same time you can see that he does have this dark streak about him as well. And I thought they did it in a very convincing way. 
And I really liked the chemistry between him and Rachel Zegler. I know some people find her irritating, but, you know, she's a good actress. She's got a great voice as well. And her kind of story about why she's involved in the situation and the love story that happens between them, I, I really got quite invested in. I think the only thing I would say about the movie is it's a very long film and the final act feels like maybe it should have been in a second movie. It feels like maybe they tried to do too much where as you go into the third act, it kind of begins like a new chapter there and it feels like the start of a movie which is a little bit strange when you're already two hours in so I think that final act they should have fleshed it out more and done it as its own movie it would have worked a bit better but other than that really looking forward to re-watching this one and it's another great addition to the Hunger Games franchise. So my number eight choice is going to be Barbie. Of course, the most popular film now of the year, which is crazy. It's made something like 1.5 billion at the box office. So absolutely insane the amount of success that movie had. Of course, combining it with that marketing with Oppenheimer, which was fantastic. So yeah, it's a, it, it, and it's I understand why it's become so popular. It is a great movie. It's very creative, very unique, and a lot of fun as well. I was really intrigued to see it since watching those initial marketing trailers where I just had no idea what they were going for with it. Very weird trailers. I was like, I have no idea what they're attempting here, but I'm really looking forward and interested to going and seeing it. And it was funny seeing this in the cinema because it was packed out with loads of families, young kids, and they were obviously you know, 20 minutes in getting very fidgety because... There's no way kids that are less, like younger than teenagers would have any idea about anything going on in this movie. So it might have been a little bit misleading with the marketing and, of course, being a Barbie film as well, uh, which is interesting. But, uh, yeah, it's a very interesting, very creative film. Uh, quite a lot of messaging in there. Some of it done really well. Uh, I can understand why some people might find bits of it a little bit heavy-handed at times, but I do think for the most part what it's trying to say, what it's doing, it does it in a in an interesting and clever way, I thought. And, of course, you've got Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling just giving it absolutely everything to these roles, taking them very seriously and investing themselves into these characters, and they're really the heart of it and what makes it so much fun to go along with, especially Ryan Gosling as Ken. Uh, he's just brilliant. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's it's one I'm actually really needing to re-watch because I watched this the morning very hungover after my best friend's wedding, so <laughs> I, I was a little bit overwhelmed by some of it, kind of, you know, the the colour palette of this movie was overwhelming to watch uh, in the morning after going to that. So it's one that I should definitely re-watch these holidays, but um, I do get the hype around it. Maybe a touch overrated, just a touch in terms of its success. Whether it's going to hold up long term will be interesting to see, but I do think it's uh, a very good movie and definitely one that's worth watching from this year. My seventh choice is Killers of the Flower Moon. Of course, the new Martin Scorsese film i did drag my heels a little bit watching this one just because i was a bit intimidated by the three and a half hour runtime i feel like he should have maybe did what he did with the irishman and released it to a streaming service where you at least had the option to watch it over two nights because seeing a three and a half hour movie in the cinema with no interval is quite punishing i'm going to be honest but you know talking about the movie itself uh, it, it's it's a, it's a fantastic movie. Uh, you know, Martin Scorsese, how he likes to do things where the first half is all about really immersing you in the situation, setting up and getting you to really know these characters so that you actually really can care about and engage with everything that starts happening properly in the plot in the second half. So I think he did a really amazing job with that. And yeah, when you get into the second half and these really kind of tragic events taking place, of course it was based on a true story of these native people effectively being slowly infiltrated uh, for people's greed and to take things uh, take things that they owned, the money, the oil, and were actually killing people to do that. And it's a, it's a pretty sad and nightmarish scenario for these characters and you do sympathise with a lot of the families in the story and what they're going through because it's, it's pretty horrific the way it's 
told here. Um, but it was very engaging. I really did enjoy the movie. It's probably not one that I'm going to re-watch that soon. It's one of those movies that you can't just have on in the background. You need to really sort of commit to it and engage yourself. But you might come back to it every few years. But in itself, it was a, another fantastic Scorsese movie uh, and one you should definitely watch. So don't be put off by that extremely long running time. My number six choice is Talk To Me. And this is actually my favourite horror movie of the year. Uh, it's not saying a lot because I think that this year, especially compared to last, has been nowhere near as strong for horror movies, if I'm honest. But Talk To Me was the real standout. And this one is just a very unique take on the possession genre. You know, it's, I'm sure I speak for most horror fans that we're very burnt out on the constant possession movies, generic jump scare, um, you know, nothing new, just the same story told again and again. Again, uh, we're tired of it and to see something really fresh like talk to me uh, I, I was just a very very welcome surprise I think the movie is genuinely pretty scary as well there's a lot of really creative and terrifying scenes in this movie that you will not be expecting how dark they go but above that above just being a great horror experience there's a great emotional core to the film as well, a great uh, lead character that you can really sympathise with and invest yourself in as you're going along with this story. And I loved the ending, very weird and crazy ending, and I think it's going to set itself up for a sequel. I would, I would happily welcome a talk to me too. So yeah, definitely, if you didn't get a chance to watch this, please go back and see it, horror fans, because this for me is easily the strongest horror film we've had this year. My number five choice is John Wick Chapter 4. Uh, this is another fantastic addition to the franchise. I actually hate that I left it so long to watch the first John Wick. I've no idea why, but for some reason, I never thought I'd be interested in these films. Just the way people talked about them never really sold it to me, but it's, it's my bad, to be honest, because I watched the first one just a few weeks before this newest one came out, and I ended up binging all of them that week. I loved them so much, so <laughs> that's on me for leaving it so long. And... I just get so invested in this world of assassins, you know, there's little things about the story that really just pull me in where you've got all the different rules about the way the assassins work and the, the continental hotel where certain business can't take place and, you know, these kind of weird bunch of characters you get throughout the stories and it just really pulls me into it. I think as well, the in terms of an action film, it just gets everything right. You know, the choreography uh, around the fight scenes is just absolutely out of this world good. Keanu Reeves at his age, his commitment to this role is just unbelievably good uh, and impressive. I, I, I mean, who doesn't love watching Keanu Reeves in this kind of movie? But uh, what he manages to pull off in, in these John Wick films is really impressive. Uh, you know, the fighting is violent, it's visceral, it's exciting to watch, it's immersive. I just have such a good time with these films. And, you know, even though this is an enormous runtime, it's like almost three hours, I think, but it absolutely flew by for me. I uh, didn't feel it at all. It's one that I'm very excited to rewatch. And I also think we get one of the best villains here as well with Bill Skarsgård. Uh, yeah, that guy is just built to play villains, isn't he? So I thought he was a really great new villain to have within this story. So John Wick Chapter 4, highly recommended. Another fantastic addition to the franchise. My number four choice is Godzilla Minus One. And this is the most recent addition to this top ten list. And wow, what a film. This, you know what, I've always wanted a really good Godzilla film. Like, in my mind, when I think of a Godzilla film, I kind of know what I want it to be, but none of the films we've had have ever managed to achieve that. Gareth Edwards one, which I thought was had good elements about it, especially the first half I thought was decent, but uh, the idea of what a Godzilla film could be, for me, I've always been disappointed by. Not the case here. I think this is the best Godzilla film we're going to have ever, we're probably ever going to have again, to be honest. I don't even know really how you could top this. Um, it's a Japanese made film. It was made for 15 million. And when you see this, you will not believe what they've managed to get away with here in terms of set effects, everything like that for 15 million. The fact that you can watch 200 million uh, dollar movies now that are absolute, that look like absolute shit. It just feels so inexcusable when you see how incredible uh, Godzilla Minus One looks. 
And the real thing they get right is just focusing on the important thing it is a really, really good human story, a very emotional story, focusing on the characters and the reason for why these events are taking place and their involvement and how they need to resolve the situation because this is Godzilla that's taking place just after uh, the end of World War II when Japan is completely broken down after the bombs going off and as they're trying to rebuild, they're faced with this another threat and yeah just the way it plays out it's very very emotional at times and it's just the characters just make you root for them you're there with them in this situation and oh it's just it's a fantastic story and you know when you have the great human characters when you fix that part of these films and have them brilliantly written like they are here it makes the action so much more engaging and exciting as well so I can't recommend this film enough. It, I absolutely agree. When you see the insanely high ratings this film is getting, I totally agree with them. I really can't fault the film. So please do yourself a favour and go and check out this new Godzilla film, a Godzilla Minus One, because it is absolutely phenomenal. My number three choice, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part One. Yeah, just another incredible addition to the Mission Impossible films. Not quite as good as Fallout. I, I literally think Fallout is just short of being a perfect action movie. I love that film to death. So uh, the fact that this is my second favourite after that is way more than I could have expected, especially from seven movies in. I mean, how many franchises can say that far in? You're getting movies of this kind of quality. You have to have respect for Tom Cruise, you know, this guy that's seemingly willing to die five times over per movie just to entertain us all for two hours in a cinema. Uh, his dedication... Um, to, to the stunts in these action films is something to be admired for sure the stunts in this film are, are absolute insanity uh, the main one that was obviously marketed him going off the cliff and the motorbike uh, is just as impressive as you could imagine and I really liked as well how they weren't overindulgent with the scene I worried it was going to feel like the film was centering around it a bit too much because obviously what it took to actually make the scene you could understand why they'd want to do that but no they're sparing with it the way they set it up is really fun and quite funny in moments as well so it's an incredible sequence and yeah I also think they have added more great characters to the Mission Impossible team as well. Hayley Atwell's character was a real standout here. She just brought so much charm to the team, really played off well with Tom Cruise as well. So absolutely loved the whole dynamic between them. And yeah, bring on the second part. It's probably one of my most anticipated films to come out the next few years. So yeah, it's another incredible movie we've got in this franchise and I'm really excited to see how they're going to conclude the story. My number two choice is Saltburn and this is Emerald Fennell's second film after she did Promising Young Woman two years ago. I was really intrigued to see this because the trailers look good but I also love her style of filmmaking as well. There's something about it that just like gels with me. It just I just really like it for some reason. And the way she talks about movies I find very interesting. How she kind of draws inspiration and influence from other stories and how she brings them together to create these new very unique films i just find something fascinating about her so i was definitely going to be going out to seeing Soulburn, and it did not disappoint it's a, a really interesting story following this very strange bunch of characters that have a lot of charm about them but a lot of little hidden things under the surface as well where you're kind of pulled into this story and this group of characters and things get go very unexpected directions uh, in the second half of the film and it will keep you guessing all the way to the end it goes to some very dark and twisted places for sure um, but I just could not take my eyes off the screen uh, and it's it's the one of the only movies I believe this year that I've been back to see twice because it's a film where once you've seen all of the twists and turns that go down in this film watching it again it's very interesting to see all the little details throughout and how it leads up to certain plot points which I really enjoyed about it and it's also led by the actor Barry Keoghan who I'm just absolutely obsessed with at the moment he is a master of playing these characters that can have all these different personality traits and you can never really understand what he's really about because he just 
he can confuse you with his motives and what he's really thinking about, what he's trying to do. And I just find him absolutely fascinating to watch. Once you've seen this movie and his story arc, you'll see exactly what I mean. But he's someone to watch because he is just at the absolute top of his game right now. Um, but yeah, this is I did, didn't expect it to come this high. But after seeing it again, um, I'm hooked thinking about this movie at the moment. It's really fantastic. And I'm, I'm so excited to see what Emerald Fennell does for her third movie and my number one choice of course is Oppenheimer the latest Christopher Nolan film and I was excited to see it of course because it's a new Christopher Nolan film you know he's a he's an excellent filmmaker he's made some some of my favorite movies of all time so who can be excited for another one of his but at the same time the story was not one that I would necessarily find myself gravitating towards you know it's not something that I would find myself reading about in my spare time the kind of the story of Oppenheimer and the development of the atomic bomb it's not something that would grab me but this movie just finds a way to keep you absolutely 100% gripped and engaged throughout its full three hour runtime it genuinely does justify its runtime as well and it's a movie that does request a little bit of work from you as well I think it's one where you have to go in and you know fully invest yourself in it and not take your mind let your mind kind of wander because it's a movie where if you miss just a few minutes you'll suddenly be confused with what's going on you know like a lot of nolan films they're very fast paced and you'll probably get more out of them on rewatch just in case you miss anything the first time through but i was absolutely gripped by this drama and just the all of the events leading up to it there's so much tension around the development of this bomb and the testing i mean just if someone described this movie it does not do it justice for how amazing the actual experience of watching it really is I just found it absolutely fascinating and not just it being this historical story about how this bomb was tested and stuff but it's also kind of talking a, a lot about the philosophy and the moral ethics of you know is it right to build weapons that you know are inevitably going to be created is it better that certain powers have control of them rather than other people who are more dangerous and have potential to do more damage with them you know should we halt development and progression of certain technologies because of the kind of devastation they can cause to humanity it kind of asks a lot of these questions in very interesting ways throughout the movie which yeah there's so much to discuss it's such a rich film there's so much to talk about after it because it is really quite a fascinating story and of course who better to lead it than Killian Murphy just you know an actor that he's so he he brings so much to the role that watching him in himself is is entertainment enough because you know he properly invests into his movie roles and he becomes the character uh, to where he's so convincing you just you go to another world you forget you're watching a movie and you're just watching him in this story and you know it just makes the dialogue even more interesting the way he delivers stuff the way he talks about things you're just it just makes the subject matter interesting even for people who are not interested in world war Two physics you know you know nuclear technology or whatever it's just you don't have to be interested in any of those things to find this film very interesting so yeah it's a brilliant film i didn't expect to love it as much as i did but when i came out i was like gotta hand it to christopher nolan uh he's done it again with another fantastic movie so for me overall thinking about it i was like this has got to be my number one best movie of 2023 so that's my picks for the top 10 best movies of 2023 please do come down into the comments section and let me know what your favorite films were and also what films are you most anticipated to watch in 2024 you know we've had some movies that have moved back june part two is obviously a massive one that i'm personally really excited for next year but do let me know what you're most looking forward to next year please as well do consider subscribing to my channel if you've been enjoying my content thanks a lot for watching this video and i'll see you next time